Welcome to the pre-recording of lecture 33, uh, which is the first half of the 17th session of MCS 260, so session 17, at the end of week 6 in the 8-week summer course. Um, last time we introduced the basic widgets to develop graphical user interfaces with Python. This is done with Gkinter. Uh, today I have two main points. I want to emphasize that object-oriented programming is really necessary when developing graphical user interfaces. I also want to introduce the canvas widget. The running application throughout uh, this um, lecture is the making of a graphing calculator. So we will evaluate expressions first. Uh, Python is dynamic, so we can type in an expression as a string, and then Python will evaluate it within the proper context. Um, to introduce the canvas, I will explain how to prototype a graphing calculator. So when working with canvas, we are working with pixel coordinates. Uh, when we work with graphing a function, we have our own coordinates. So we have to map the own coordinates within an, any application to canvas. And I will end with uh, the binding of the arrow keys to canvas. Uh, so last time uh, I very briefly, uh, as an illustration of a more extensive graphical user interface, I introduced the binding of the mouse event to canvas. Um, that went way too fast. Um, so in some sense, I will uh, try to, before actually we had introdu introduced the canvas widgets properly. Okay, um, what is a graphing calculator? Uh, so here is a first uh, script. Uh, so with uh, Python, you can type in um, an expression. So here the expression that is typed in is three times the cosine x minus the, sine minus the sine of x. Then the user is prompted for a value for x and uh, the program will uh, return uh, the value of the expression. So this is dynamic at a runtime. Uh, so this is not baked in to the source code of this Python script. So that is the basic, uh, that's the basic idea for our GUI. So how do we start with this? We have a GUI that essentially consists of one row. Um, there are two labels, uh, one label preceding the widget for the expression. So the user can type in an expression that can be evaluated by Python. Then there is the value for x after the second label. And then the last entry widget will display the result of the evaluation after the user presses the button. Um, we can do this, and I will demonstrate in the second part of this lecture how to do this without classes. But if you do this with classes, then you can separate the layout of the GUI from the functionality. So if we do this without classes, then we can't really define the button. After we can define the button only after we have the callback function. When we work with the object-oriented version of the GUI, we can think about the layout first and then run the GUI also without having the calculation done yet. So it will simply display it. The buttons will not work yet. Um, but with the object-oriented version, 
we can then proceed with the methods to define the callback function for the button. So there are always in any uh, object-oriented version for a GUI, we have a constructor, we pass the window, um, eventually also other parameters. So this is this WDW, so that is the window object. The window object is made in the main uh, function. So in some sense, this is a standard template to use object-oriented versions of uh, GUI development. So we introduced object-oriented programming a while ago. This could be another introduction to object-oriented programming. All right, um, let's then move on to the graphing calculator or a prototype for a graphing calculator where you have a window in which the, an entry widget in which the user can type in an expression. So here it is a periodic function with decaying amplitude. So the further you go out, uh, the smaller the function gets. So here you see the shape of this function. The function is plotted between the range negative two and plus two and a thousand sample points were plotted. So there are three more entry widgets. Um, so in the previous GUI, we had an X. Now the X actually will range between negative two and two, and we will take 1000 points in that interval. So the graph will be displayed on the canvas. Uh, the canvas is um, the last widget, so on the uh, fourth row, um, when the user presses the button sample and plot. So that's the introduction, uh, perhaps a proper introduction of the canvas widget used uh, to graph. Uh, what is important is that when we think about the function, so the periodic function, it's a cosine and um, the amplitude, uh, the exponential will also be between zero and one. So actually our height uh, of the window will actually be between negative one and one uh, for the cosine. Of course, if we would be using those coordinates, we wouldn't be seeing much. Uh, likewise, if we are plotting between negative 2 and 2, then if we would use these coordinates directly on canvas, we also wouldn't be seeing anything. So in working with canvas, uh, so there are many attributes to draw a dot, to draw a line, but the main issue is always where do you position your objects on canvas? And for that, you need to scale uh, your coordinates from the application. So here the application is the graphing of the window. We have a narrow, we have a range between for X. So and typically this range is always floating point in scientific applications. Also for the Y, we have the coordinates, uh, the minimum and the maximum of the function. So given those ranges and if you know how to scale for x x between a and b y between the minimum and the maximum then actually you can also do it for the canvas here we assume a, a square canvas but again if you can do this for x and y you can do it for anything so i will define a map so it's a linear map. Um, so there are four parameters, A and B, the range for the X. And then L and U is the range for the pixel coordinates. So A and B, negative one, two. The L and the U can be zero and 100. So how do we get to this formula? Well, let's first uh, verify it. So if x equals a, then you see this factor here, x minus a becomes zero, and then we have l. 
So L typically will be zero, but it's it's not that much of a great of an expense to uh, define it in general. So if the x equals b, what happens then? Well, x equals b, you have b minus a. In the denominator, you have b minus a. So these two cancel each other out, and you have u minus l plus l. So if x equals b, then the function phi, the map, returns you u, the upper bound. So this is the verification. It's a linear map. If you know the values for 2, you know the values everywhere. So this is an important uh, thing to keep in mind. Uh, also, the virtue of object-oriented programming is that we can hide this complexity in one helper method. So we will code that formula into our um, object-oriented uh, version using the data attributes. The big L and the big U will be the coordinates, will be the dimensions of our canvas. And that will be stored as data attributes in our GUI. So it's very good that we have had an introduction to object-oriented programming. This lecture also serves as an enforcement of the main concepts in object-oriented programming. Here is the, um, the main outline of the class that we will be using. So we always have a constructor. Uh, the constructor here in this case defines the layout and also the data attributes of the graphical user interface. We have the scaling function. Um, so and the scaling function will be applied to the points that are sampled. So the computation that will be done will be the sampling. Um, so the sampling, we will practice this first with a function. Uh, that needs to be done before, because we need to compute the minimum and the maximum. It, here we had the mapping, the mapping of x from a, b, so left and right, into the L and the U, the lower and the upper. So the scale point is will translate the formula on the previous slide. And the scaling will actually scale all the points, and then we will render the plot, we will show the plot. The, the, the showing of the plot actually is the main uh, command that will be constructed. But you see the showing is the sampling, one calling of the method, uh, the scaling of the point, and then uh, rendering the points on the scaled points on canvas. So there is, in some sense, there is a main functionality of this class that is uh, rendering the points on canvas. But as with any graphical user interface, it is the user who determines the action. So this is user-centered, user-driven execution of programs. All right, then the last um, application I will show is the binding of the arrow keys. Uh, so in some sense, there is one main application, the building of a graphing calculator. If that is actually not so appealing to you, then you can immediately look at uh, the last script that is posted for this lecture. So what this uh, GUI does, it allows you to move a dot on canvas by the arrow keys. Uh, so if the user presses left or right arrow key, then the dot goes left or right. Um, if you do the up and the below uh, keys, it goes up or down. Uh, so the GUI for this is relatively simple. So there is a lot of action that goes on, but um, there's the virtue of Python is that it requires uh, a relatively little amount of code, and a lot of the code is actually um, consisting out of giving structure to the program. So the main goal of the lecture is that you can do something uh, with the um, with the programs. So our 
project is to making a pie chart. So the last exercise is, is actually to use the canvas. Uh, you have a list of numbers which define uh, the distribution of the pie, the ratios. Uh, that was actually the mathematical difficulty in the third project. Um, this exercise uh, allows you to gain a little bit extra credit if that didn't go well, or, or it's also practice uh, to, to draw the dividing lines between the sectors in the pie chart. Um, Object-oriented programming is used to wrap and in some sense, uh, Turtle is a restricted view on uh, T. Kinter in a way. Uh, we can reverse it. So you can, we have the arrow bindings. Uh, so you can actually start to make drawings with these arrows. So you can provide buttons, pen up, pen down. So if you start to move your dot around, uh, you can make drawings. Um, with the buttons you change the state. Um, so a GUI can record the state, so we will use that feature when we get to animations in the second half of this uh, 17th session. All right, um, so the other options, the other exercises uh, are inviting you to make options. Uh, so for example, in the graphing calculator, you may not have liked the big dots that were used uh, to show the shape. Um, you can have a check button. So where either you want to see the dots or you want lines connecting the sample points. Um, so you can also change the other features. So you can actually change the thickness of the lines. Um, uh, the precision in the first um, entry widget, uh, so in the first uh, GUI, uh, we can ask for the precision, the number of digits after the point. So that is a formatting. Um, okay. There are many useful programs we can uh, do. Uh, so the main goal of the lecture is mainly for you to uh, start experimenting with uh, Tkinter and Python. So what I'm showing now is a prepared uh, Jupyter notebook in which I will, so there are five Python scripts uh, for uh, this lecture. I will show these Python scripts. Um, and that's actually the more proper way to run these scripts. But the Jupyter Notebook has the advantage that I can walk through it line by line. Um, okay, so let's do this. So I will uh, execute uh, the cells. So our first GUI and perhaps here I should uh, go back to the slides. Uh, so what I want to make is uh, here this GUI. Uh, we want to provide code. And I first will do this without using a class. Uh, so and in some sense, it works pretty well. So Python is an efficient language. So I have two label widgets. I have three entry widgets. So I will import from Tkinter the TK object to make a window. I have a label, entry, and a button. So I need the uh, end and insert predefined uh, labels. Uh, they are predefined to work with the entry widgets. Our mathematical expressions, I will allow cosine and sine. Uh, to allow everything, I could now do essentially from math import star. Um, so that will allow every mathematical expression to be evaluated. So my window has a title. So I place the, the first label on the first row. We start to count from zero. So that is to say this is the replacement of the prompt. Uh, then we do the entry. We have uh, the 
on the third column, so column two, first row, row zero, we place our second label. Then we have the entry widget for X. Uh, no, sorry, the entry. So we have the function. Then we have indeed the entry widget for X. Then we have the return widget. Um, so this defines the first row. So the first row, so columns uh, 0 and 2 with the labels, 1, 3 and 5 with the entry widget. Uh, so you should keep actually this picture in mind. Row 0, we have only one row. Uh, column 0, column 2, column 4, column 1, column 3, column 5. So that's it. So this is the layout. And then the button is actually not yet defined. So the button is in column four. But I, in order to define it completely, I must um, define the callback function. So the callback function will evaluate the expression that was entered in the first entry widget. So the entry widget uh, is f, f for the function. We will get the string out of there and it will be evaluated within the context. Uh, so the context is the value for x. So x is a local variable here within the context of this function. When the function runs, x refers to a floating point number. If the get was successful, if the user was a good user and typed in not a character or any symbol, but typed in a number that could be cast into a floating point number. So here we have the explicit type conversion. The dot get is replacing the input. So in a regular Python script running at the terminal window, we have the input. So we have the result entry widget, pick R. We wipe this entry widget entirely clean with the delete method from start till end, from zero to end. And we insert the result in that result widget. So there are many things that are happening. Um, the simple documentation string is evaluates the function. A more extensive uh, documentation string would actually um, explain it a little bit better, but here in words. Uh, so we have four instructions um, and every instruction um, does uh, an important, adds to the important functionality of the GUI. Okay, so let's run this. So this is not the proper way to run it. So you see here um, that uh, something appears. Um, so let me navigate on my computer. So I have practiced this. So I have the cosine x minus the sine of x. Uh, say that I want to evaluate this at the point 1.2. And then I press the button and you see the function value uh, coming in. And uh, you can um, see the motivation for seeing uh, fewer decimals after the dot. So that is one exercise uh, for you to play with this. All right, uh, so as long as this GUI uh, is up, so that is the, I can play with this. So I can play with uh, the expression, I can play with uh, the function and I can um, you see the immediacy of the GUI you also see that uh, there is no strict order anymore just like we run a Jupyter notebook although I'm running it in order but there's nothing that prevents me to change and then each time click a button after the change all right so this is our first uh, GUI. Um, so I should probably show 
the complete program. So how you run this. Uh, so typically one defines the script. Uh, so it's a very small script. Um, all in total, not even 30 lines. Um, so and it's fine for uh, the little prototype that we want to do. Okay, the object oriented version takes more space. So here you see that I need to scroll down. Um, so I can't really entirely show it. But it is much cleaner in the sense that I have my class which separates the layout from the functionality. So the functionality is now properly defined by the method. And the method here is this functional data attributes, uh, calc. So within the constructor, I can already refer to the method self.calc. So self defers here to the object that is instantiated in the main function. So it is almost twice the amount of lines. But I hope that you start to appreciate a little bit the structure. Uh, so I can define all my the layout uh, with the in the constructor as the data attributes. Uh, so it also makes it clear what actually gets stored. Um, so here the X is not really stored as a data attribute by the object of the class. So it is, an, it is stored uh, as the string that is inside this entry widget. Both the entry widgets uh, for the argument of the function, so what will become the x, and then the expression. All right, let's execute this. Um, so I can execute it uh, better probably by... Um, running an, in a terminal, but I will do it in the Jupyter Notebook anyway. Uh, so here you see again the class uh, in execution cell 14, um, where I want to make the point that we have the uh, data attributes, um, the widgets, uh, so the two labels, the three entries and the one button, are the data attributes of this graphical user interface. They are defined and they are properly positioned all at the same row. And then the method in this class uh, evaluates the expression. So this is a very basic GUI. If the user is not well behaved, unexpected events will happen. So a better GUI would indeed have expression handlers and would probably also have a, a message box to give feedback in case the user does something wrong. So here we focus on the very basics of this uh, GUI. So the main, there is still a main uh, function that actually launches the uh, event loop and it's the same program again. So I can not type in an exponential. Uh, so let me be again the uh, very nice user. And here you see the uh, GUI has exactly the same functionality as before. All right, um, let's now introduce the canvas widget uh, to make a graphing calculator. So if I go to the slides again, uh, we should now think that we want to extend this. Uh, so it's extension typically one could do with inheritance, but you see that the entire layout is changing. So now it doesn't make sense to provide one X. There is still an X in the expression. So that's the user still should type something in X. But uh, there are new entry widgets. Um, so there is the left bound, the A, the right bound, the B, and then the number of samples. Uh, so the X will live between negative two and two. The Y, the uh, height, 
will live uh, between the minimum and the maximum of the function. So in some sense, uh, as a programmer, I have to compute this dynamically. I have to compute this after the user has filled in all the entry widgets, after the user has pressed the sample and plot button. Okay, uh, that for the introduction to the canvas widgets. But we are not there yet, uh, so I have to talk about the um, computation of the pixel coordinates. Um, so I have to map, so here another example, if the x lives in between negative 1 and 1, then you cannot directly plot this. Most likely the x is also a floating point number. Whereas on canvas, you reason with pixels. Uh, so the input for whatever you position on canvas must be in pixel coordinates. Okay, so let us compute this. Uh, so uh, the running example will be this uh, periodic function with a decaying amplitude. I will work between negative 2 and 2. And there will be a sampling range. Uh, so you see if I execute this here, I only took 10 samples. You see that uh, the minimum is uh, minus 4. Actually, it's probably going to be more than minus 5. And the maximum is 5. Um, so that will be the range if I scale the height. Uh, so the heights will be between uh, this minimum and the maximum. Uh, for the A and the B, I will have the minus 5 and the plus 5 or whatever is here. The pixel coordinates will be whatever uh, the user wants. Uh, if you have a big screen or a small screen. Um, and it will be defined with this um, function phi here. Uh, so we're using Greek letters. Um, we have the one argument of the function, the x. Uh, so the mathematical notation is actually helping us. So you have this special arrow uh, which lists the argument. When we evaluate the function, uh, the context is defined. So the a and the b. So x belongs to a and b. The result will be between l and u. Um, once we can understand, once we understand what the mathematics does, uh, we can simply translate uh, the function. So here you see the application of the map fun. So we translate the arithmetic. Uh, I made sure here that all the arguments are floats uh, except for the L and the U. Um, you see that uh, what comes out is actually a float, um, but it is here, I, I could have done a specific uh, typecast into an int. Okay, so this is important uh, to realize before you start working with a canvas, uh, because one, get, get, one may get... Uh, to carry the way with all the features and options that one may have on a canvas uh, and then overlook uh, the most basic uh, thing that when you plot on canvas you must use pixel coordinates. Here is a very simple map. It works for the X and it works for the Y. Okay. So um, it's good to define what the graphing calculator does. Uh, so when we introduce object-oriented programming, we introduce the UML notation. Uh, that was another often frustrating part. Uh, we have to make these drawings with the diagram, but it slows us down. Uh, so it's still very good practice to actually write down the layout for the graphing calculator. So our programs are getting longer in this course. Uh, on an exam, what would you need to know? Well, why do you use an entry widget? Why, why would you use a canvas widget? It's very obvious here. 
but uh, when do you use a radio button when do you use a check button when will you use a scale uh, when you design uh, your GUI so on the exam you will have to make a GUI and justify which widgets that are being used um, also describe the layout so this is a description of the layout row by row what comes out on every row so this is in words the specification for the constructor so the text that is here in this markdown cell could go in the documentation string of the constructor so um, this is self-contained so i'm importing everything from tkinter that i will be using there will be a very big button uh, so that's why i'm introducing the w for the west e for the east and for the north s for the south and then the all is also something that will be very useful i have now my decaying amplitude so i don't import everything from math so import star could be useful to make the uh, GUI a little bit more expansive. So let me uh, execute the GUI. So you see um, it's the constructor still fits within one window that I can show here. Uh, you see the constructor, uh, the constructor um, defines the layout. Uh, it's rather long but there is a lot of repetition um, the things that i want to stick out so the big button here uh, the big button is spans the five columns or i'm sorry not the button so the function so the user can actually type in uh, the entry widget is actually therefore stretched out so in the entry widgets there are options that can that you can specify the width for the entry widget um, so here you have the big button that's later so the, there are six columns uh, so the big button spans uh, the entire six columns at the middle um, i'm sorry the canvas uh, spans the entire um, so i'm making here a canvas object uh, with the options that are the dimension so the dimension self dot dim so self dot defines the data attribute so the dimension dim is a data attribute so every method can refer then to this dim size is the input parameter um so uh, the highlight here almost uh, glossed it over when you define a canvas you have to pass the window uh, so the window is what is made when instantiating when calling the constructor of the tk class so that's what i called here wdw we have to specify the dimensions and we can also have the background color uh, explicitly listed so that's the important constructor so we construct uh, and we make an object of the class canvas so the data attribute cnv will be an instance of the class canvas so there are other now data attributes we have the original samples uh, we have the where we sample then we have the values and then we have the scaled coordinates so these are the data attributes that will be stored by this class so we have the sampling which is the um, running of our function so i had the function to compute the minimum and the maximum um, i take the arguments from the entry widget so the a the b the number of samples the step size so this was the dx so in order to have really a number of points i have to divide by nbr plus one and plus one uh, so I do the sampling with the append um, and actually if you remember the last lecture on profiling uh, if you want to be more efficient uh, a list comprehension would be better here but just to indicate that we are doing this step by step 
so I have two lists. Um, I will make um, I, uh, these are the original where I sampled and then the values. Um, then there is the scaling of the points. So the function that is called here. So these, so the scaling of the points happens. Uh, we have the points that are appended. So the points will be the tuples. Uh, so they will be giving the pixel coordinates. So we scale the pixel coordinates. And then there is one important feature on the canvas, and I probably should have emphasized this earlier. So on the canvas, the origin is actually top left. So that is uh, here done in the scaling. So it's very important when we define the logic, when we put something on canvas, we don't want to recalculate every time before we want to uh, do something. So the importance of good design is also that you do the cohesion and you do the separation of the technicalities when you design something. When you scale to pixel coordinates, these are really the pixel coordinates as you want them to disappear, uh, as you want them to appear on canvas. So you don't want that your plot is upside down. So that is actually what this uh, function takes care about. So the origin is not as we would expect at the bottom left, but it's at the top left. So that's why we actually have an uh, axis, the, this is pointing downwards. So we have the scaling and then we also have the axis. We have to take care of the coordinates of the canvas. So this is important. Um, another feature here, I do not want that I'm really touching the bottom. So my upper and my lower, so it's kind of 5%. Um, so actually I'm going to use only 90% of the canvas. I'm going to leave somewhere a white um, boundary. So I'm kind of having a frame that I could eventually also draw. So this is another technicality. So the frame parameters, uh, they could have been extra data attributes. But I think I added this in uh, somewhere at the last minute to make it look a little bit better. So the scaling function, so it's a method that belongs to this class, actually is concerned with the transition from the evaluated points. So that was the sample method. So the sample method takes care of the evaluation of the expression. The scaling takes care of the computing of the canvas co coordinates. And then in the showing, you are dealing then with the methods that are applied to the canvas object. So the show is actually the main functionality in this GUI. It does the sampling, it does the scaling, and it does the uh, rendering. And now you see I mentioned the all. Why do we need the all? Well, I want to wipe the canvas clean each time when uh, the user presses the show button. The show button, I should have probably emphasized this. So the self.show, this is where the action happens. So when the user presses this button, the method show is executed. All right, uh, enough talking. So you, you see the options here. So my oval, I was using the color sky blue uh, because you can use any color. Uh, so this is now you could eventually in the next uh, in the lecture that follows here, I will introduce the color wheel. So you could uh, have a scale that has the coloring of your, um, you can, uh, so here the size of the ovals, it's uh, six, uh, six from the center, so it's 12 pixels rather big. So that's an option you may not like either. So you could add somewhere another entry widget or a scale for the thickness. So there are a lot of features that can be added. 
Okay, so let me run this. Um, so I'm the good user. So I'm typing in uh, the decaying amplitude of uh, a cosine function. I want to see this between negative 2 and 2. And let's also use 1000 volts. So here you see the shape of uh, this uh, periodic function. You see the amplitude that is decaying uh, between negative 2 and 2. So uh, I hope you also you start to appreciate a little bit uh, whatever everything that goes in into the plotting tools. Um, so we are I'm not inviting you here to pursue this further. Um, if you are into plotting graphing look into the package matplotlib uh, that is part of the computational ecosystem of Python. But this is the logic uh, that you get to it. Um, and of course we can make our own custom made uh, graphing calculators. Okay, I have about five minutes left or less than five minutes left for the last uh, GUI. That is the binding of the arrows uh, to canvas. Um, so this allows you to get some feeling of the canvas coordinates if you find it uh, very awkward um, that things are um, the zero zero. Uh, so the GUI is um, very straightforward essentially. So there are two main functions. Uh, there is the constructor and there is the drawing of the dot. The drawing of the dot uh, is happening when the self dot move. Uh, so you see here the canvas has the bind. When any key is pressed, and here I'm asking the user that the user presses tap. Um, so that will be the start. So I have only one widget here so I have I only want to il introduce the uh, binding of the arrows uh, so it starts from the center so you see the center here I have to divide by two uh, the position the number of rows and the number of columns um, and I mentioned the integer numbers uh, so typically well when the R and the C are even numbers these will be integer numbers, and I think one picks even numbers, but they are floating point numbers anyway. Uh, but floating point numbers, you can pass them. Uh, so we have the drawing of an oval again. So here I fill it now with red, and it is stacked. So I deleted all in the previous application. Uh, you can have a very elaborate picture drawn on campus or on canvas, and you can selectively. Uh, so for every object that you make, so create oval will make an oval on canvas. It's actually a circle. Um, you can tag it, so you can give it a name. And then before, so here it will delete the tag. Uh, it will delete the object that was tagged with the string dot. So I first get the position. So the position is a data attribute. So it's actually a list of two numbers. Um, I get those two numbers here. Uh, so this is important to make the distinction between a data attribute and what is a, a functional attribute. So no brackets here because self, so the, the POS is just a list of two coordinates. All right. Uh, so the constructor also does something. So the constructor draws the initial dot. So, and I'm presenting here again one full GUI immediately. But actually, when you develop this, uh, please do first the constructor, then run it, and then do the drawing of the dot as a method. So, do this step by step. Um, so, when you write longer programs, Execute early and often. Execute early and often. 
Now the main technical issue what I want to introduce in one minute here and this is something that you need to know uh, that you don't need to know you just look it up how I looked it up how does two people do this well there is the event uh, that uh, you can that has the attribute key sim key symbol if it's left right or up uh, that will be on so it's actually um, it's one of these uh, values that will be on when the left arrow, the right arrow, the upper and the down is uh, pressed. Um, so we have the donut topology uh, that I will introduce also in the next lecture with the animations. Um, so let me, I'm running over time. Let me run this GUI. So here you I'm should follow my instructions. So to bind, I must uh, place the window and then press the tab. Now I'm going down, I'm pressing the down key, press keeping pressing the down key. And you see that uh, the dot actually moves and there is this donut topology. Uh, so also if I press uh, right, uh, the right key, then you see that at some point uh, the dot appears again. Uh, so if you want to have some feeling for this, uh, modify the GUI and print at each step uh, so you can use a message box if you want to be fancy but you could also print and in the terminal window you will see the coordinates so every time when I'm uh, changing this here every time when I press it, I can, can do this step by step I can move this around uh, these methods are executed so the donut topology so let me get out of here so the donut topology is here implemented if you go out of bounds you subtract so if you're going right you subtract the number of columns if you go up you subtract the number of rows all right uh that is it um again uh, there is a lot of material that is technical um, things like how to do this arrow binding uh, is something that you look up or you look at an example uh, what you actually should know from this is the mapping between the application coordinates and the pixel coordinates whenever you want to do something with a canvas uh, you better isolate that complexity in a method, in a class. And that's then the main story for today. Uh, why did we introduce uh, uh, object-oriented programming? Well, object-oriented design of a GUI actually always works with this uh, template here. It allows you to build more complicated programs, uh, more useful programs as well, where you can focus on the methods you focus on the layout when you make the constructor you focus on the functionality when you define the methods of the class okay i'm running out of time but i hope that uh, this was an interesting lecture